actually I moved into a, a new place uh, here in Lynette. Um, sure. Um, so one of the things that we'd like, that I'd like to, you know, don't know yet, one of the most popular things, perhaps you could begin at the beginning of how you found out about how you were recruited, what the nomination process was. We'll do that first. Okay. Whenever you're ready to write. I, I first heard rumors. Oops, I'm going to start doing it. Okay. Yeah, so tell me, how did you find out about it? I, I had heard rumors that there was a poet populist and that the city council had the idea that, and Nick Licata especially, that uh, there should be a, a, a ceremonial poet for the city. But as I understood it, Nick did not believe, and the city council went along, did not believe that it should be chosen by a committee. The, the poet, the ceremonial poet, should not be um, someone strictly from a particular background as in academia. And the first uh, two years, I believe, that the poet populist existed, uh, I believe that there was contest and so it was almost like a poetry slam well I, I, I and I to be honest I don't know who won that I didn't know very much about it but what I did know was that at a certain point the City Council said you know instead of having uh, a, a read-off or a poetry competition let's let the city vote at large for a poet that they feel should represent them and I became that first Poet. And it was, it was uh, a wonderful honor because I, I guess I had no idea that anyone knew who I was. And that, that was, a, it was a privilege, it was, a, it was, it was a, an honor. Some of the things we did were write occasional pieces. So if someone said, we would like for you to be at the opening of City Hall, then they would say, would you write a poem or two for the opening of City Hall, and I did. I did those things and appeared in places, and uh, it was always an honor because people were always glad to see, for some reason, a poet rather than a bureaucrat. And and uh, I was lucky enough, and I thought it was fun that the poems, some of the poems that I wrote, ended up in the time capsule at City Hall. It was kind of fun. There's, I guess there's a time capsule buried someplace deep, deep in some dark secret safe that will be opened 500 years from now or 50 years from now, whatever it is, and there will be my poem in there. As Poet Populist. As Poet Populist. Excellent, excellent. Very good. Let's try that again. Okay. And one of the things that I thought was interesting to hear is some of the things that you do as Poet Populist. Sure. So you, you might uh, mention or, or start this sentence by saying some of the things that poet populist, or I did as poet populist. I'm trying right. to think of other places that I appeared. Uh, well, of course, you're. Oh, okay. and, and we're only making the right thing. Poet, the poet populist, it seemed to me, and I think it seemed to the city council, was that the poet would appear at events, at occasions, and there's a type of poem called an occasional poem, and you, if you know that there's going to be a new city hall, there's going to be groundbreaking someplace, you're cutting a ribbon at a grocery store, then the poet populace can appear and write something for that occasion. I wrote uh, several poems for the opening of the city hall, and those poems have been put into a time capsule to be opened 50 years from now. Another time that I made an appearance was to throw out the first pitch at a Mariners game. It was one of my proudest moments and also one of my most embarrassing moments because my daughter, I had, I had practiced and practiced with my friend Dave Casario, another poet. We had gotten me to the point my, that my arm was warm. I was in great shape. I just knew I was gonna burn in a strike. My daughter said, Dad, no matter what you do, just don't skip the ball. Please don't throw like a poet. I had a number of other people say, please, whatever you do, just don't throw like a poet. It was a cold night. I was nervous. The crowd was 
screaming my name. Well, not really. And I, I warmed up. I took the mound. I actually stepped a couple of feet in front of the mound and I threw it and it bounced. And I'll never forget how embarrassing that was. And, and my daughter and everyone just went, oh, I can't believe he did that. That was one of my appearances as the poet populist. How there's this expectation of what a civic poet might be and what, how the poet populist different, is different primarily in the fact that people vote. Talk a little bit about that. And I, I wonder if it might be more understandable for people who don't know anything about poetry if they're watching this to reference a poet laureate is appointed by, you know, an official, whether at whatever level it might be, the president okay. appoints a poet, there's a you know, federal or a, a poet laureate of the United States, okay. states have their own poet laureates, so this is different. Okay. Does that make sense? It, of course it does, and only, only recently has the state of Washington did the legislature pass a bill authorizing uh, a Washington State Poet Laureate. And it will be, that, that position will be appointed by a committee, and it'll be a committee of a number of arts organizations, such as the Washington Poets Association. And the difference, of course, is that... I'm sorry, can we stop for a second? I'm not sure whether I would... Okay, sure. And hold on a second. And enjoy. There, there is right now uh, a bill that has passed in the legislature, in the Washington State Legislature, to authorize the appointment of a, a Washington State you know, Poet Laureate. There, there has been recently a bill passed in the legislature, in the Washington State Legislature, authorizing a Washington State Poet Laureate. And that position will be filled by arts organizations, by a committee of representatives from arts, the arts community. For example, the Washington Poets Association. What I like about the Poet Populist is the entire notion of not having a select committee that has their own frame of reference, whether it's uh, a, a, me a member of the organization or someone from the university. I like the idea of, of a popular poet, of, of someone that the people actually like, that is willing to get out and present themselves, have a good time, uh, read something that's maybe not quite so inaccessible as a, a lot of poetry that sometimes is. Something there's. It's not a bad thing to be accessible, and it's not a bad thing to please an audience. Art, it always seemed to me, was about communication between the artist and the audience. And if you completely forget about the audience, you've, you've taken away half of what I think art is. That's good. That's a really good thought. Sorry, did I stop you a little early? No, no. No, I'm glad you did. Well, I, I think that uh, any position uh, where you represent literature is important for the literacy of the population so that if, if only one kid comes to hear me perform and they say, gosh, that looked like fun, I'd like to be a writer, then that's a good thing. And I think it's important that governments, municipalities, honor writing in a way that honors literacy. So it, se it always seemed to me that uh, this position, if it did nothing else, might get people to write, whether, especially kids. It might, some kid might come in and say, gosh, I have this idea and I'm going to write it down. Later on, because it was such an honor and I did feel like it was important to represent the city, and, and whether that meant changing poems a little bit changing the language of the poems a little bit depending upon the audience. I feel like that's, that's an obligation and it's, it's important for writers uh, or any kind of artist to look at their audience and say this is appropriate for this audience. And so it was not a stretch to do that for me. I, in fact, it was kind of fun to, to look at the audience and say this, this poem works for this audience, this one doesn't. And, and it was an honor to be able to do that at the, at the places where I was able to perform. What questions did you, do you remember your, and you tell me, but I, was there, did you? Well, all, over and over again, kids would come up to me, and, and I didn't realize it quite so much at the time, but 
in recent years, I've had uh, college students come up and say, you know, I saw you four or five years ago, or I heard you read here, and, I, and it, made, it changed the way I thought about poetry. I didn't realize poetry could be so much fun or could be so uh, visceral, and you changed the way. I had no idea that people were out there really listening, and, and the poet populist position gave me a feel for the idea that maybe someone was out there listening. It was, and that in itself made it an honor. Was there anybody when you were a youngster that, that, that did poetry that made you go in this direction yourself? Actually, let me ask a different question. Would you have any kind of advice for the next four months that's coming? And if you were, could you just begin your answer by saying, if I had some advice to give to the next four months, it would be? If I had some advice to give to the next poet populist, I'd say the most important thing is to have fun. Because I, I genuinely believe that when you perform, when you stand up in front of a crowd, it should be the most enjoyable experience of your life. It should make the audience want to laugh and cry, maybe scream at you, but whatever it is, if you induce some sort of a reaction, then you should walk away pleased and it should be one of the most enjoyable experiences to go and perform. More than anything else, Poet Populist should, should go out and perform a lot and have a lot of fun. Thanks. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a great thing about having you take on your own space. Well, I'm excited. Too. Are you? There's something I could do. Normally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been in this space before. It's really great. Yeah. 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 It's more hot than the space before. After I've been here. Yeah. Okay. Usually it's so close with that first landing. Oh, oh yeah. 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 It's, I mean, it's we're hoping that maybe we'll get... Yeah, 100 people. 100, 100 yeah. people to fill up the top, the top section. 100 people would be great. Yeah. Yeah. My, my yeah. Yeah. Uh, we do quarter pages in the PI. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the weekly yeah. donate? Yeah. 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 They did, they didn't tell us. Huh. Yeah. I, you told me that. Yeah. 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 Hey, they're all going to be as the next night. Yeah. Okay, go in. Guys, like, how often do you come like, like, this is the one of my show, it's just showing you, it's like, how do I move as a child? Like, move? Yes. I can do a boy, I can do a voice when I do a child boy, but I'm not a child body. What does that look like? And how do you Yes. See, you, you guys hate that. Well, you yeah. yeah. you, 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 you can hate it from I live for. I live. Uh, yeah, you can be like, yeah, character is like, you know, trying to move it, I live for. And they call this is about my health. Preaching back to this. Perfect. Hey, yeah. The puppet. Or just make my hand. Okay, anytime, Frank. So, again, there's two areas. One is I'm hoping you can tell me what, how you first learned about the poet populace and how you got involved. Okay. I first learned about it. Okay, so um, I first learned about Poet Populist when I was working for Nick's office, Nick Licata's office, um, with you on the Wordsworth program. And I think you guys were just starting up the Poet Populist again. There was a little bit of a hiatus. And uh, so I remember you were in conversation with Bob Redmond and some other people about it. So that's the first time I heard about it. And what was your first thought about the Poet Populist? I mean, just the idea of how it works and how I, I mean, I think it's a won wonderful idea. I mean, um, I um, really. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Oh, distracted. <laughs> um, stop, stop. Stop. <laughs> so I think Poet Populist is a great Ooh, idea. Like um, Brett, I'm wondering, is there something about the Poet Populist that attracts you to it? And if there is, maybe you could say that the thing that's interesting about the Poet Populist for me is. Um, well, one thing that I think is um, obviously really um, interesting about Poet Populist is that it's a democratic process to elect the Poet Populist versus Poet Laureate, um, which I think other people have probably addressed. But um, aside from that, I also just think it's a great way to invigorate the um, poetry community in Seattle and to um, bring a real diversity of voices to the table in terms of the candidates. Like I'm really impressed, especially with this year's. Um, there's, there's 16 people on the roster and representing all different kinds of arts organizations um, and lots of different ways to approach poetry. Um, so that's really interesting to me. 
and the idea that any one of us could be elected and we don't know who it's going to be is, is interesting too. And, um, and everyone is really worthy. I've worked with a lot of people who are in the running as well. So, um, and they're all really great poets. Good, good. Um, how do you see the Poet Populist as a program fitting in in the literary world in general, in poetry, in, 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 in specifically? I mean, I've heard rumors that some people think that it's kind of a weird thing, that there shouldn't be an, a populist approach to poetry, that maybe the poetry slam world is enough for that, and otherwise, you know, just leave it to the poet laureates or officials to elect people, I mean, to appoint people. Oh, wow. So perhaps you could tell me how you think the Poet Populist Program fits into the literary world. Yeah, I think um, the Poet Populist Program is kind of interesting because it seems to really be up to the individual person who's elected each year. You know, so I mean, I think if, if it were, you know, I think there are, there's somebody who's running who's um, coming from more of a slam background, and obviously that person would be tapped into that community and um, would probably bring, um, you know, the um, talents of that community to other aspects of the poetry community. Um, whereas, you know, someone like me is probably coming more from a sort of, you know, on the page background, and um, I've worked with other kinds of literary organizations in town. So, my, you know, I would. I think the thing that's interesting about Poet Populist is that you can bring some different aspects of the community together. Um, and, um, you know, it's, the way you do it is really up to the individual poet. So I understand uh, now that you, you need to run soon because you're going to be reading today? Yes. <laughs> Could you say something to that? To that about the reading? Um, you know, I love reading at the Seattle Public Library. So, I mean, I did this last year. I was running last year, and I think it's a great venue. Um, it's a beautiful space. I always just like being in the library, so that's nice. Uh, so I'm happy to be here, and um, it's always good to see the other people read as well. So I'm not familiar with all the all the poets, just about half of them. So it'll be good to hear some new voices for me as well. Do you think that this uh, is called a read-off, correct? Mm -hmm. So um, perhaps you could <laughs> use that term when you respond to this okay. probe for me, which is. Do you think that the read-off actually serves to um, increase votes for any particular uh, candidates? Probably, maybe, yeah. Maybe you, maybe you could phrase it by saying... You know, I oh, think okay. That. Yeah, I think the read-off is a great way to publicize the um, whole Poet Populist campaigns and uh, campaign and the whole program. Um, I think that um, partly because it is... Um, you know, you, you guys do, do such a great job of advertising it, and it's on the Seattle channel, and it's uh, last year I know it was on KUOW, and um, all of that really helps. It, it really helps the individual poets, certainly, and it definitely helps the organizations they're representing, which I think is one of the great things about the whole program. Do you feel that poets that are participating, that are, that are candidates and they're running for office, that they need to actually be politicians to a certain degree? And if so, is that a good <laughs> thing or bad thing? I don't think so. I don't think the poets need to be politicians. <laughs> I don't think we know how to do that. So. Good, that's it. Okay. Great. Thank you. 
Joshi, Program Manager of the Washington Center for the Book at the Seattle Public Library. And on behalf of the library, City Council President Nick Licata and Bumbershoot, I want to welcome you to the Central Library and thanks very much for joining us this afternoon uh, for part one of the 2007-2008 Seattle Poet Populist Candidates Readoff. Um, part two, the other eight poets who have been nominated will be next Monday evening, July 23rd at the Richard Hugo House on Capitol Hill. Um, as with all library programs, I need to start by thanking the Seattle Post Intelligencer for generous promotional support for library programs and Starbucks for today's refreshments. And also, of course, the Seattle Public Library Foundation, whose support makes possible all of these free library programs. Um, so today's program is being videotaped by the Seattle Channel, and it is also being recorded for library podcast. You can subscribe to free podcasts on the library's website, spl.org. Today being Sunday, parking, if you're in the garage downstairs, is available for the regular Sunday rate of $5 for up to four hours. You don't need special vouchers for today. Uh, so now I'm going to turn the microphone over, I think, to City Council President Nick Licata. Well, good afternoon, and thank you for all being here today. This is pretty exciting. This is the third uh, anniversary of being here at the Central Library. I want to thank Chris again for all the work you've done um, for the read-off of the uh, nominees. And this year, uh, Bob Redman, who's not here today, but his assistant, Sienna, is, you want to st stand up or raise your hand? There you are. He's helping Bob Redman in this effort. Um, she, uh, uh, Bob said that we, at this point, have more ballots cast than we did for the total last year. And we still have a month to go, so the balloting still goes on. We've got 16 candidates. We'll hear eight today here, seven minutes apiece. They have up to, they don't have to. And uh, I'm going to read off the names first and the nominating organizations. And then, Chris, I'll have you inter uh, Do you want to introduce each one as they come, come up then? We'll do it that way? OK. Um, and uh, let me just, why don't we just go ahead and begin? I think that would be the best way to do it. So I'm getting the nod from Frank Video, my assistant. But Frank, why don't you raise your hand, too, because this is the other person who's played a critical role. <laughs> and uh, we also have a special appearance of our former poet populist of the 2001-2002, uh, Bart Baxter. And Bart, you're going to be reading something as well, I hope. OK. So I'm going to name off the individuals at the end of that, then I'll invite Bart up here. Uh, we have Victoria Ford from Rose Alley Press. And when I read off your name, if you're here, raise your hand. There we go. And then <laughs> so we, all brought, we all brought string sections here. So. Uh, Chad Goer Sojourner of the CD Forum for Arts and Ideas. There you go. Anna Maria Hong of McLeod Residence. Jared Lessing, 826 Seattle. Amy Mahoney, Knock Journal. Right. Peter Pereira of Washington Poets Association. Molly Tenenbaum, Jack Straw Productions. Okay. And Len Tu's Poets West. Great. Great. Okay, um, so we're honored with Bart Baxter here today. And Bart, one of my favorite poets, who always, I don't know how many, no, he's a professional pilot, and I'm, I'm always impressed by that. Bart, thanks for being here today. It's a pleasure to be here today to honor this tradition in Seattle public life. Arts commissions, arts committees, academia have a vested interest in the status quo. The public has this remarkable capacity to appreciate and understand innovation and quality. And so I think we're here today, these poets who the public has chosen, who, who the public will choose, 
I, I honor you for being willing <clears throat> to stand up here bringing your private art into the public sphere. The poet populist may on occasion be asked to write a poem for the groundbreaking of a park or the ribbon cutting of a shopping mall, and I hope that you do that and you're willing to do that with relish and good humor. I was asked to write a piece for the opening of the city hall, and the poem was to be included in the time capsule. As you may know, across from city hall is the courthouse, and so I wrote this poem, two sonnets for city hall. She has a little cubicle upstairs, turn right and down the hall from personnel. She doesn't see a lot of millionaires. It's more an ordinary clientele like you and me, a pair of baggy pants, a two-day growth, a soul patch waiting here between computer paper, potted plants, and plastic chairs. But then she helps us clear things up. No polygraph, no fingerprints, no questionnaires. She listens. It's OK, she says. There must be some mistake. And since we made the error, there will be no delay. No deadlines missed, no fees, no insincere apologies, since empathy works here. Her buddy, Justice, works across the street. They carpool, mostly. Justice likes to drive. And empathy just wants a window seat so she can see how sometimes they arrive at different places. Empathy believes in circumstance, that things aren't always where you think they are, like stars, like how the leaves arrange themselves in Occidental Square. But justice works across the street. He still has faith in absolutes like precedent and retribution. He knows how the shill is always on the make and where the rent comes from. He knows why children disappear. He also knows why empathy works here. Hi, my name is Victoria Ford, and we've been asked to self-introduce, so, uh, hi. Um, thanks, uh, Councilman Licata, for doing this, and, and Frank Video. And I'd also like to thank David Horowitz of Rose Alley Press for all his many wonderful endeavors. Thank you, David. Almost four years ago, an Assistant Secretary of the Interior referring to the need not to preserve the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge said, if we are saying that the loss of species in and of itself is inherently bad, I don't think we know enough about how the world works to say that. <laughs> Knowing how webbed forepaws of polar bears fathom the Arctic. How the western grebe sails, its neck a rudder, through sunset and sea. How we grasp, having gorged at lunch for the slick supper of oil. How the heart of one caribou quick steps heard. How the drill of market catches in the throat. How wings of eagles Updraft seeing a globe of air. How light flies down, sun into cell, and cell dawning on the world. Wild Chapel. A squirrel jumps sunlight in dark branches crossing three stories up. Leaf, light, limb, words enough for one on the move. We sit below 
Rhythms of tree and field stone, breezing, grasses, phrasing star. Oaks breathe in water, sun, their columns shore, their leaves air, their veins, signing in green hands of sky over the gathered field stones of the pulpit, resting in mortar like palms, outspread, together, offering to keep rock open and round. Whatever we hear, we hold, notes of a chord resounding the length of our shared breath and stand to sing. This last poem is a glossa, uh, four ten-line stanzas, the last line of which is from another source. And the sixth and ninth lines of each stanza rhyming with that borrowed tenth. Usually, the borrowed, the source is another poem, but I've chosen the Pledge of Allegiance uh, in its original form. Uh, I pledge allegiance to my flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. The, the writer, Francis Bellamy, wanted the word equality in that last phrase but the sponsors were opposed to equality for African Americans and women, and so Bellamy was obliged to leave that word out. There are a few other references, one from Helen Keller, who talked about the service of all to all, one uh, attributed to Chief Seattle, we belong to Earth, and finally, um, from Martin Luther King Jr., the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Glossa allegiance. Ours, yours, his, hers. How do we hold life with each other? Can one hand gentle the child's shoulder? One hand stretch over the heart? A mind keep the vision of the many like starlight? Can we claim ourselves in the country dark, shaped and staggered, bodies infused, shimmering, drawn in orbits as sun rays sway the grasses to stand in the service of all to all? Within this magnet, I pledge allegiance to my flag of the United Songs of America, the red and blue songs, the amber, the green, the purple songs, the city, the fishing, the grain, the mountain songs, raised in the right to be raised and remembering songs of slavery, of theft, of life, of lands, of native ways and trails, of shame, of truth. I pledge my voice to my time, to the Constitution, the long-range plan, and to the republic for which it stands sentinel. Where we live in trust on this planet, not belonging to us, we belong to Earth, to be, to feel, to act, to love, to speak, to see, to know. When a people raise their hymn, I stand under every green note of the country of its raising, in its pattern of light, its honor of root, water, soil, limb, and air. We breathe, become under this canopy, one nation, indivisible, with liberty to carry into the next generation for every leaf in its leaning. For the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. For the curves of the branches of knowing, equality for some flattens into a wall for the rest. For learning to stand in wind and sun, for circles of adults to respond, arcs for children to call, and justice for all. <laughs>